Two of my favourite people are Katie Porter and Sheila Jackson. Every time they speak in Congress, uh, they make a point of not only delivering facts, getting straight to the point, but using humour, uh, a little bit of uh, sarcasm, and it just, to use a perfect expression, puts the ball in the back of the net. Here's a couple of moments from uh, last week's Jim Jordan, James Comer circus. It seems that every day they're having this circus into the Hunter Biden nonsense. I'm glad that um, my colleague from the other side has moved to limit debate because this hearing, to put it bluntly, has sucked. There is one thing that Republicans and Democrats seem to have in common today, which is that we're willing to be players in a game. Both sides at times using this hearing to take shots at our favorite political nemeses. And I see some members practically patting themselves on the back when they get a good insult or counterpoint in. But this isn't a game. Oversight isn't a game. Under this Republican majority, we have wasted month after month censuring, expelling, holding people in contempt, and almost impeaching. And for what? Okay. Republicans have passed nothing of substance in the House. What our oversight committee should be doing, instead of spending now dozens of hours arguing about Hunter Biden, is real oversight of issues that affect all Americans, like corporate price gouging, unconstitutional government surveillance, and waste at the Pentagon. The fact that members think that real Americans, outside of this partisan environment on Capitol Hill, care about this is everything that is wrong with Washington. So that Americans who love this country and just want a better future don't have to listen to hours of frustrating attacks and procedural debates in a partisan game, let me sum it up. One, there is zero evidence of President Biden doing anything wrong, including in connection with his son. No evidence of an impeachable offense. Not a little, not something, none. Two. Hunter Biden has offered to testify in public in front of this committee. If Republicans only want his secret private testimony, that is, as the kids say this these days, sus. If my Republican colleagues are truly in this to get answers, and I hope they are, stop wasting all our time on holding Hunter Biden in contempt on a deposition and ask him your questions. He'll be here under oath and the American people can watch. What's more transparent than that? What's better accountability than letting the American people hear Hunter Biden's answers? That's real accountability, not political gamesmanship behind closed doors. This is a game where nobody wins and everybody loses. It is Washington at its worst. And I'll tell it like it is without pointing the finger at either party. This sucks. I yield back. Does any further member wish to debate on the Frost Mr. Chairman, Amendment? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Palmer. I, I, I appreciate the gentlelady's remarks, but I do want to point out that one of the reasons it's necessary for Hunter Biden to appear to give a deposition is that he is a material witness in an ongoing investigation of potential corruption at, 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 at a very high level. I think, to your point, that this is devolved into partisan politics. When we have an obligation as members of this committee, a, a very solemn responsibility to pursue evidence and investigate charges legitimately and not let it become what it has become today. And I don't think we're getting there. I do think that Hunter Biden has a responsibility to respond to the subpoena through his legal counsel, if, if he so chooses, uh, in a responsible way. What he did in showing up outside the steps of the Senate is contemptible. He shouldn't have done that. But we need to investigate this. We need to follow the evidence. And he needs to appear as a material witness to an ongoing investigation. If he comes in to testify before this committee, there are other issues related to his activities that I think would be germane. But I really believe at this point we need to move forward to this. And, and, and frankly, I, I think Hunter Biden should have responded to the subpoena and, and either himself or through his legal counsel. Will that, Mr. Chairman, or yield back? Gentlelady from Texas, recognized for five minutes. 
I thank you. I, I ask to strike the last word. I, I want to follow up on my friend from California, Mr. Iser, about the importance and the level of uh, uh, cruciality, I use that terminology, of this committee's work. Uh, it is constitutionally grounded, and there's no other committee uh, in the House and its counterpart in the Senate that has the custodial responsibilities of the accuracy and the integrity of the Constitution. That means that we should take our work extensively and very seriously. We can begin to quote uh, documents uh, which include the very essence of our message. And I always like to remind you that the Constitution begins by saying we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. But I'd like to focus on the idea of established justice. We can procedurally try to maneuver uh, my good friend's inactions of not showing this committee respect by not appearing and responding to the subpoena. I called Chairman Jordan my good friend because we've worked together for years. But you did not show up and present yourself to this committee, whether or not it was in this session or the last session. Now as we proceed, uh, we will uh, hear on the other side a constant pointing to members who did their service on the January 6th committee. They will take pot shots at Mr. Schiff. They will find dated and unheard commentary that they will utilize, which I believe will continue to diminish the importance and integrity uh, of this uh, particular uh, session and constitutional responsibilities of impeachment. I, too, was going to have misgivings of the amendment that would have joined uh, Mr. Jordan because I am not ceding the point uh, that Mr. Biden, Hunter Biden, should be held in contempt. And I will continue that approach through the rest of this markup. There is no evidence. How can you have evidence of contempt when you have an open and public statement that I will appear? I will appear. I will use my constitutional rights of appearing with counsel, and I will come before the committee. I was there on that day when he was available to come. How can you argue that he did not come when you made no effort to indicate that we are waiting for you in the hearing room set up for you to come now and speak? That was not done. And if I want to go a step further, I'm not suggesting to Mr. Biden that I would want that to be the case, but no law enforcement was sent to direct him to the Judiciary Committee room in 2141 Rayburn on the House side. Contempt. The only argument you want is to continue to give a circus-like atmosphere to this very important committee that, under the Constitution, is to be able to establish justice. Justice. There is no cause for what we're doing today. There is no basis for it. There is no evidence for it. There is no reason for it. Again, I do not believe Mr. Biden, Hunter Biden, should be held in contempt. All of the allegations that you have are simply that. Allegations of the abuse of power, the misuse of the relationship of father and son, all of that has to be proven. But you are going at it, and we will hear all of these bits and pieces and drops from the January 6th committee and so-called uh, interactions between members on that committee that you either like or dislike, and we all will probably have a say in that. You cannot take away the sacred responsibility of the January 6th and this committee that is constitutionally grounded. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I want to be clear uh, I would not have been happy voting on that particular amendment because I think that yours should have been separate. And I do not believe that Mr. Biden, Hunter Biden, should be held in contempt at all because I was there with you, Mr. Chairman, on that day, and you did not seem to make any effort to make sure that Mr. Biden knew he was welcome in that committee at that time for us to hear him in an open setting.
With that, I hope that we can establish justice in this committee for once and for all, and I yield back. General Lee yields back. The gentleman from uh, North Carolina, Mr. Bishop, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm...